You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Great to have you back with me here again today. Can't wait to get into our Total Wellness Tuesday show on what are the factors in your life that deplete you so quickly of your vitamins, your minerals, your antioxidants, the detox factors, everything that allows you to live a long, strong, healthy life. And believe it or not, there are a lot of things that people are doing on a daily basis that further depletes them. And you might say, well, why does it even matter? Well, here's the reason why, is that the faster you get depleted of your vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, proteins, et cetera, the faster you age. And with aging, most likely comes inflammation, and it comes with a breaking down of the hair, the skin, the nails, everything in the body, right? With that, your overall energy, your life force, that is a real thing, right? The amount of energy, amount of life that you can produce. So what I want to go over today are what are the things that we're doing right now that are further aging us. Now, I did, I did mention a little bit of this, and I do hope that you tuned in the show on episode 1236 the molecule that creates inflammation and aging in the body and brain. So I talked about it on that show, and I do want you to tune into that if you have not already. But I want to further expand on it because what happens is when we do a lot of things in our life, they actually deplete us faster. But there are a few that you may not know about. And this is why in the first topic that I want to go over today is our body needs a lot of vitamins and it needs a lot of minerals on a daily basis. But here's the interesting thing. Not all of them are created equal. The body doesn't need the same amount of each one of these. And what is optimal for one person is often a little bit too a little too little or a little too much for another. The way that we can figure those out absolutely is through functional medicine lab testing. Well, what does that mean? Well, an organic acids test would show you all of your vitamin levels. A hair tissue mineral analysis would show you all of your mineral levels. But that's not what I want to go over today. Those are great labs. But here's the thing. Here's the interesting thing. And a lot of people don't know this, which is why I want to bring it up on today's show, is that every vitamin and mineral, especially minerals, have an antagonist. And you might say, well, what does an antagonist have anything to do with minerals? Well, here's the thing. When you take more of its partner mineral or its antagonist, it actually lowers the mineral of the one that you're not taking. So let's give you an example of this. 30 years ago, for sure, even maybe even 40 years ago, a lot of MDs were recommending calcium to women at least during menopause and definitely after menopause. And they would do that to create strong, healthy bones. Well, it backfired on them. Here's why. Because during, you go to conventional medical school, they don't teach you about vitamins and minerals and nutritional supplements from that standpoint. You don't take nutrition. If you do, it's one course. And I know a lot of doctors taking another course in nutrition. One course, one book does not make you an expert on the subject, right? It'd be like me saying, oh, I'm going to become open heart specialist. I'm going to read one book on it. Well, it doesn't work that way, right? (laughs) It would be crazy to all of us to think that. So it's amazing that we have our surgeons and we have our specialists in all these different disciplines. It's fantastic. But nutrition is something that has to be really taken seriously. And so do nutritional supplements. So here's the thing. When they were prescribing, they were recommending calcium for women for strong bones, the bones were actually getting weaker. Even if you saw the outer part of the bone thickening, we saw a weakening of the actual inside of the bone. The other thing we saw is this. We saw a hardening, 
a stenosis of the arteries, specifically in women who supplemented with higher dosages, 1,500, 2,000 milligrams of calcium a day. Some doctors are still recommending this today, even though we know the literature shows, the studies show, the more straight calcium you take, the more potential for cardiovascular disease in women or heart attacks. It's a problem. Why? Here's the thing. Traditional naturopaths and naturopathy and bioregulatory medicine always knew that the partner to calcium was magnesium. So by giving someone calcium, not only are you allowing that to build up in the bloodstream and in the arteries, but it's unabated because it's pushing down magnesium. And here's the interesting thing. Our body does not have a wild storehouse of magnesium like it does calcium. Calcium is stored in the bones. There's calcium muscles. There's some magnesium stored, but nowhere near the amount of calcium. On a hair tissue mineral analysis, we know the ratio is 6.67. It's 6.67 to 1 from a calcium to magnesium. So when you're looking at that, people become greatly deficient in magnesium. That is why we use so much magnesium. And if you go back to my podcast on the top 15 nutritional supplements that doctors recommend, across the board, chiropractor, functional medicine doctor, acupuncturist, naturopath, chiropractor, they're recommending magnesium. Why? Because people are so short on magnesium. And magnesium is what helps pull and draw some of that calcium out of the arteries. It helps calcium better absorb into the bones. So that's why we have to look at this. Calcium and magnesium are partners. Over time, if you push, cal- if you push magnesium too high, well, you get the same effect on calcium. We're typically using magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. Again, it depends on the person. And then we may switch over to a product called CalMag Complete. And the reason is, well, CalMag Complete has calcium and magnesium. So it works well. But it's at a smaller amount. And I'm, that's why I'm, I'm just going to give you a couple more examples and then tell you the best way to take your nutritional supplements. This is really important. So another really good one is zinc and copper. Okay, Everybody needs zinc and copper. But lately, we're on a copper-based scare. Don't give me copper. Don't give me copper. Keep in mind, copper is at a very small amount, maybe one milligram, maybe two milligrams at the most, but only when it's in a minimum of an eight to one ratio from zinc to copper, or it's even up to a 15 to one ratio of zinc to copper. If you look at a product like our balanced zinc, you'll see that there's both zinc and copper. Well, that's for people that need both zinc and copper. We saw that again on a hair tissue mineral analysis, and you can run other labs as well. You can run whatever you'd like. But a lot of times, we're seeing elevated levels of copper in people's bodies. And it can lead to things like fatigue, skin rashes, low mood, ADD, ADHD, learning disabilities in children, sometimes even bedwetting. And when we look at that, we say, interesting. We run that and we see higher levels of copper. Where do they get the copper? Well, potentially from drinking water, potentially from the environment, potentially from other things, or this is probably the most common, they had depleted levels of zinc. Why would they have depleted levels of zinc? Well, zinc is used as an immune booster. It's used to boost hormones. It's used for detoxification. It is used every time that your body needs an amount, a defense attack, a white blood cell attack. And that includes fighting against candida and other gut-based issues. So think about all the antibiotics people use. So zinc is in great demand and it gets depleted. And if zinc isn't high enough and it doesn't come high enough through the diet as well, I mean, think about all the people on stomach acid blockers as well. Zinc's not going to be absorbed as well. So what happens? Well, we allow copper to start to rise in the body. Not because you're taking in a lot of additional copper, because you're not taking enough zinc. And that's the issue. That's why functional medicine or bioregulatory medicine is so interesting. You can actually look inside the body and see why it might be acting this way. On yesterday's Mindset and Motivation Monday, we talked about anxiety. We talked about overwhelm. Well, those are absolutely related with low zinc. We talked about low mood and depression. So you have to understand it's like low magnesium, low zinc, we see that all the time. We boost those, a lot of that anxiety, a lot of that overwhelm, all that starts to dissipate. For It isn't magic. It's not the placebo effect. People are like, oh, well, uh, maybe, who knows if it had any effect. Well, here's the thing. You've been like this for a decade. You came in, we did the protocol, you got well. That's the thing. It's like, again, you don't need to give any credit ever to the practitioner. What you have to say is this, is that I was able to heal my body because I gave it what it was deficient in. 
Really important to look at that. And, and again, everything is like this, by the way. I mean, you can look at sodium, potassium, same thing. Too much sodium, you push down potassium. That's why, I mean, a lot of people, they cut out salt when they have high blood pressure. Believe me, I understand it. I get that outlook. But the, really, the issue is you have a sodium potassium imbalance. You have a sodium magnesium imbalance. What do you really need? More magnesium and more potassium. Again, I tell people there's usually about six underlying root causes to most of what you call a dis-ease, right? There's only about six, maybe 12 for the most complicated ones. And all you do is work the process. That's it. High blood pressure isn't always too much salt. It's not always too little magnesium or potassium, although that helps tremendously with most people. Sometimes there's other issues surrounding it as well. Higher levels of cortisol. It can be hardening of the arteries from years of increased levels of epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol. But all of that can be fixed. It really can. It just doesn't necessarily happen overnight, sometimes not even in a month or two. You have to give it time. Why? Well, you're literally rebuilding your arteries. I mean, that that takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but it does work. And there's always an answer why. Okay. Now let me move on right now because I want to show you what begins to deplete your body and of these vitamins and minerals. I'm going to give you a few examples. And then I also want to bring it full circle and, and let you know that I'm not the advocate for high dose nutritional supplements. I am an advocate for nutritional supplements. There's no doubt about that. They help me get my life back. There's no way I would ever say that they're not important, especially if you've read the rain barrel effect, you see how depleted the soil is. You see how depleted our food sources are. So we can't pretend that, oh, well, I'm just going to get it all through my food. Well, here's the thing. You can, if you believe that, then I say, great, then, then let's do it. Let's see if that's really the truth. And you can see that now by running organic acid tests for your vitamins. Gives you all your B vitamins, your vitamin C, even gives you biotin, coenzyme Q10, and acetylcysteine. And it gives you folate, your B12, your B6, B5. I mean, it's amazing. And then a mineral test will tell you, okay, are you really getting the minerals that you need? Well, again, like maybe yes, maybe no. You can test that. Same with omega-3s. You get enough omega-3s. It's either yes or no. It's literally, it is a yes or no, which I love. I love those binary decisions because I say, oh, well, no, no, you're not. Or yes, you are. You're doing a great job. And there are a few people. There are. I've told you that. I told you the five fish that you eat. If you eat those, you raise your omega-3 levels. And again, I know I work with a lot of people that are vegan as well. So when we look at that, we say, okay, I mean, are you getting your omega-3s? Yes or no? And if not, if the answer is no, it's okay. We don't need to make you eat fish. But we can't deny that you have low levels of omega-3. We can't pretend. You can still have a heart attack. You can still have high blood pressure. You can still have type 2 diabetes. You can still get every inflammatory issue from having too high levels of omega-6s. So what do we do? Well, we just give you then a vegan-based source of omega-3s. And we can give you food-based sources if that's what you you prefer. Just a little harder, but we can do that, right? You just have to eat more of it. So now let's move on. And I'll, I'll move that forward towards the end about the supplement part of it. But I want to give you this. It's because these things will make you require a larger amount of vitamins and minerals on a daily basis. So people are like, do I need more vitamins and minerals? Well, my opinion is this, is that everybody needs something like the daily nutritional support shake, daily fruit and vegetable blend, omega-3 support, and the daily probiotic support. That's our foundational protocol level two. Foundational protocol level three is when you add in the daily digestive enzyme. Why would I ever add that into someone's protocol? Well, it's because when you take an enzyme with a meal, especially a full spectrum one that we formulate, you break down your food to a better degree, which means you extract more of the vitamins and minerals and nutrients, right? So you extract more. So that's why, I mean, that's most people choose to do in our practice. So that's what we do. And those are on a daily basis. But again, that's giving you status quo. That's giving you what you need to be a healthy human. Now, some people will run a lab and like, oh, well, you actually need much higher doses of magnesium. And so we'll add in some more full spectrum magnesium. That might not be forever. Maybe we run a mineral lab too, and they're low on both zinc and copper. So we get balanced zinc, which has zinc and copper. What if they're higher on copper than they are of zinc? What do we give? Well, we just give them straight zinc. We use zinc picolinate. So again, you never have to, I want to make sure that you always have the option because you always need the option. You need the option to run labs on your own without asking permission from your doctor. You need to be able to take nutritional supplements without permission from anybody. All of those are at equilibriumnutrition.com. But even if you don't want to purchase from there, you can still read the labels. You can still see what I'm recommending, what I'm talking about, and then you make the best decision for you. It's all about the philosophy, which is my philosophy, that knowledge is power. 
Because remember, if you don't know any of this, you can't make the right decision. But once you have the information, the nice thing is you can't unlearn it. You can try to deny it and forget about it, but you can't unlearn it. And then you have the information to make an informed decision, which is really what it's all about. People should have the ability to make an informed decision. And one, ideally backed by science and backed by real world experience. And that's what we provide. So here's the thing though. Here's healthy things and unhealthy things that are going to deplete you of vitamins and minerals. The first one is this, and it's one that I love, and that's exercise. But the more that you push your body and the more you sweat, the more it will deplete you of what are the ones that I was talking about right away. B vitamins, zinc, vitamin C, glutamine. When you get tired and run down, B vitamins, zinc, vitamin C, glutathione, glutamine, right? You don't have to put glutathione in that, but that's what helps with the immune system. And it can be made from your cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower and you can, it helps with your zinc and your vitamin C and your selenium, all those, right? Everything you would get anyways on a daily basis. But understand that the harder you push your body, it has to rebuild and it has to buffer stress. Exercise is a stress. It's a good stress if you don't push yourself too much. And I talked about that on a previous show on hermetic stressors. So I hope that you check out that show. So here's the thing though. That was going to deplete you of extra vitamins and minerals. So if you exercise, you're probably going to have to add a little bit of vitamins and minerals to your daily routine with electrolytes. The next one is this. I want to talk about this. If you are using a sauna, you could potentially be using up a lot of those electrolytes. And that would include the calcium, the magnesium, the sodium, and the potassium. It's not just sodium when you sweat, right? You're using up your electrolytes. You could also be getting a little bit dehydrated. Good to rehydrate, but if you rehydrate with just straight water, it doesn't give you the minerals, which can sometimes leave you more thirsty or having to urinate a whole lot more because there's no minerals with that. So a lot of people do much better, especially like the ectomorph, lenobardi type with a the smoothie. They can absorb a little bit more of that. Seems to work better for them. And again, that's from clinical practice. Or what could you do? Add a nice squeeze of lime, pinch of sea salt to that water. Now you just gave yourself back the sodium and the potassium. You'll get your magnesium. You'll get your calcium throughout the day as well. So that's a really nice one to do. We call that natural Gatorade. Okay. Another one of mine that's more a one of a caution. There are people right now that drink a glass of wine or two or have a beer or two on a nightly basis. And they use that alcohol as a way of unwinding. You know, they unwind after a stressful day. It allows them to kind of forget about the day, be a little bit more relaxed, maybe sleep, fall asleep at night. Because remember, when you're going to sleep at night after drinking alcohol, you can typically fall asleep faster. But what happens is you do not get into a deep, restful night of sleep, which leaves you groggy or more fatigued that next morning. Plus, with that alcohol, and I've done whole shows on this as well, it does not allow your liver to detox other chemicals in the body as well when it's dealing with ethanol or some type of alcohol in the body. It's an important one to look at it. But here's the interesting thing. Alcohol depletes you of what I just spoke about before. Your B vitamins, your vitamin C, your glutamine, your overall zinc levels. It depletes that without a doubt. I mean, you can go right down the line. Well, vitamin B1, thiamine, depleted, depleted by alcohol, right? Alcohol can actually start to lower your iron levels as well. Vitamin B2, lowered by alcohol. B3, which can lead to lower levels of serotonin and depression, depleted by alcohol. B5, which is a tremendous one for boosting energy, boosting hormones as well, like natural testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, etc., depleted by alcohol. So if you're trying to raise testosterone levels naturally and you're drinking alcohol, you're basically up against a brick wall. You're just banging your head against that brick wall. It's an important one to look at. Vitamin B6, that's the unsung hero that I talk about all the time. What is it used for? Well, it's only used for converting thyroid. You're using it to convert um, tryptophan to serotonin, eventually then to melatonin for sleep. Can't do that so well if you have lower levels of B6. A lot of people dealing with oxalates right now. Oxalate seems to be big. And again, go to stephencabal.com forward slash podcast and just type in your keyword. Type in oxalates. You'll find a podcast I did on that. 
you'll see that a lot of the time, it's not just the calcium oxalates that lead to kidney stones and things like that. It's actually a deficiency in certain vitamins, one of those being B6. Okay, a lot of issues we see with lower levels of folate leading to methylation issues and inflammation. Well, one of the biggest ones is, again, consuming alcohol. So I'm not going to keep going down the line of talking about alcohol and how it affects every vitamin. But you have to understand is that when you drink the alcohol, it's not necessarily binding up the vitamins, but it takes more vitamins to be used in order to counter the effects of the negative side effects of alcohol, the detoxification part of it. And again, it's a stressor on the body. So what I look to tell people is this, is you know when people say, oh, what's the hangover remedy? Well, a lot of people are using things like an activated B-complex you know, at dinner before a night of drinking. And they're, they're taking their vitamin C and all of those things. Well, you I mean, understand that that's because you need extra vitamins and minerals to combat the stress of drinking alcohol. That's what really what we're looking at. Okay, another big one I want to look at and talk about is this. Really important. And that's that there's a lot of people using Tylenol and sometimes even aspirin on a daily basis. It doesn't happen as much with ibuprofen, but it can. Ibuprofen actually affects the kidneys and affects the heart. But a lot of times we're, we're giving kids as well acetaminophen or Tylenol. And what happens is it's actually depleting their supply, their young supply you know, as children or adults of producing glutathione. And glutathione is what we need to ultimately get these harmful fat-soluble toxins in our body to be transformed into water-soluble toxins that we can then easily excrete the body out through the body through urine, sweat, or stool, and even a little bit through the lungs. So I I go in depth on on a show called How to Complete a Functional Medicine Detox, and I'd love you to check that out as well. I think it's episode 826 or 846, and that will teach you all these different principles as well. That's why we talk to people about a functional medicine detox. Listen, it's all science-based. We know exactly what you need for phase one detoxification, what you need to, to do for phase two detoxification. We even know this third part of detoxification that I've spoken about before inside of the gut. So what I want you to think about today is this, because I don't want to go overboard, is that the medication you're on could be depleting you. Going too high on something could be depleting you. So one more example is this. Look at the medications you're on and what it could deplete you of. For example, a lot of people are on blood thinners. Warfarin is one of those. Well, it can deplete you of vitamin K. So Again, if you're on diuretics, it can deplete you of sodium and potassium. It can start to feel weak. So what I want to do today is look at this. Look at your overall lifestyle. What are you doing and how hard are you pushing yourself? The more exercise you do, the more sauna you do, the less sleep that you get, the higher stress that you are, the more that you need your vitamins and minerals. Now, the converse is also true. The less that you do in life, the more sleep that you get, the more nutritious food, probably the less vitamins and minerals you need overall. And we also want to look on the outside of the body. How fast, how quickly do you see yourself aging in terms of the hair, skin, nails? Let that be a window into what you need internally. And I say this because the ectomorph body type or the vata body type and pitta as well, which is characterized by fire and water they tend to age at a little bit more of a rapid rate. There's more oxidation going on in the body. So what do they need? Well, they need a little bit more of the vitamins and the minerals, the antioxidants and essential fatty acids. Now, you can lab test. You can do the organic acids test and the hair tissue mineral analysis to find out your exact levels. We call that a starter kit. We'll link that up today's show notes. I don't even know what today's show is. Let's find out what that is. Just head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1250. stephencabral.com forward slash 1250 for that. But one more thing is I want to add to you is, and I really want you to understand is this. I'm a huge believer in nutritional supplements, and that's why I wanted to do today's show. And I started the show this way, is that you don't want to do mega doses of nutritional supplements on a daily basis. If you're working with a practitioner, they might give you a higher dose in the beginning, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, and then wean and taper down. That's an absolute possibility. Sometimes that happens with B vitamins. Sometimes it happens with magnesium for sure. So you will do that in the beginning, but only to restabilize the body, to actually achieve equilibrium. And then you'll begin to taper off. 
I want you to, to know this because there's a lot of anti-aging protocols coming out right now and they use mega dosages of a lot of products. Now, one of them that I would consider mega dosage would be vitamin B12. You'll see sometimes on people's labels, it's like a thousand percent of the RDA, right? The daily required or the required daily allowance. So we're looking at that. We're saying, oh yeah, but that's only to prevent certain diseases. That doesn't mean optimal. But if you see someone recommending 20 grams of vitamin C a day, nobody's a bigger fan than vitamin C than me. There isn't. But 20 grams of vitamin C is not ideal either. Because as you're taking in all of that vitamin C, your body still needs to process it. So my goal for everyone is this, because I've gotten a lot of questions on this. That's for the reason for today's show. Take your vitamins and minerals and everything that your body needs on a daily basis. What I say is do that as your fail safe. No mega dosages, no mega dosages needed. Just get a good dosage. We call it our daily foundation protocol level one, level two, or level three. Then after that, you'll use a little bit more of individual vitamins. If you've run an organic acids test or tissue mineral analysis to figure out if you're low on those. And that, that, of course, makes sense, right? You're bringing up what you already know you're low on. But when you're looking at a lifetime of health, it always starts with food. So we have to make sure that we're getting seven to nine servings of the most nutritious foods in the world. And those would be brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Eat a rainbow. I did a podcast on eating a rainbow, and I told you the different benefits of foods that are orange, yellow, blue, purple, white, green. There are actually different benefits to each one of those foods, and they contain the plant phytonutrients that we need to stave off things like cancer and heart disease. So focus on those. Use your nutritional supplements to make sure you're getting everything on a daily basis as your fail safe. That's the best way to look at it. And then if you're using other products, great and fine. Let's just not use them at mega dosages. That's all. So I really believe that we can combine the best of whole food nutrition, the best of functional medicine and orthomolecular medicine, which is our vitamins and nutrients that we know work. Again, we have clinical data points on all of these. Combine that with healthy levels of exercise, not depleting yourself. Healthy levels of sauna, not like people I see online trying to do an hour of sauna. There's no need for that. 20 to 30 minute sessions over time, more days a week work greater than one hour long session, which creates a larger hermetic response to the body, which creates more reactive oxygen species and free radical damage. Get your seven to nine hours of sleep per night. So let's do all of the things right. And it's part of the de-stress protocol. If you don't know about the de-stress protocol, I wrote it about it in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. And again, that book, everything I bring you, whether it's the Cabral concept or in my books, any proceeds from that, any profits from the rain barrel effect, all of that's donated to charity. Because I want people to understand how we've been practicing for now many years, what, 19 years. And it's allowed me to work with over a quarter million people, my team and I, not just me. And we have so much data that I want to pass that on to you. They all work. Healthy food does not mean that you can't do nutritional supplements. Nutritional supplements does not mean that you shouldn't eat well. Eating well does not mean that you shouldn't do some exercise. And that doesn't mean that you can't benefit from sauna or some massage. And it certainly doesn't mean that you can't benefit from working on your mindset. All of these work together. And that's what today's show is all about. It's about balance. It really is. Not too much calcium, right? Not too much copper. It's about balancing that calcium with magnesium and the copper with the zinc. As I always say, if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to help me spread the mission and pass this show along to anyone else you believe it could serve. As I always say, if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to help me spread the mission and pass this show along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. 
At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to IntegrativeHealthPractitioner.org.